We spoke previously about how if the economy enters a recession and we leave it alone, prices will adjust and the short run aggregate supply curve will come back to the long run equilibrium. But now let's talk about what happens if we decide we want to do some policy to help get us back to the long run equilibrium at a faster rate. So we'll start with doing our normal recession caused by a decline in aggregate demand. So if aggregate demand were to shift to the left, let's say looking something like this, our new short run equilibrium will be here with a lower price level and a lower level of GDP. Notice we have lower prices here on the y-axis, and we have lower GDP. We're lower than the potential GDP, meaning we're in a recession. Recession. So we want to move this aggregate demand back to the right. So we're going to want to do expansionary policy. So we're going to do expansionary monetary policy, known as MP here. And we have our old tools or the new tools that you'll need to understand in order to see this expansionary monetary policy. Please make sure you go back through the readings in the textbook so you understand those different types of monetary policy. We're going to do expansionary monetary policy, meaning the goal is to make interest rates lower. So we're going to decrease those interest rates. Those decrease in interest rates are going to make consumption, investment, and net exports all of those increase. And we know an increase in consumption, investment, and net exports, that's going to lead to that aggregate demand curve shifting to the right. So we're just going to move this aggregate demand curve back. So we were at point B here, and it just moves back and makes point A and C the exact same thing. So we are pushing aggregate demand back to the right through expansionary monetary policy. It brings GDP back to potential GDP, and it stabilizes prices. We are able to both hit the maximum employment part of the dual mandate for the Fed, and also stabilize prices.